Welcome to the BFME1 Online Battle Arena. Today we are on the map Fiery and Deal in a one-on-one -on -one replay cast between Good and Evil. We have Gondor versus Mordor. So the light versus the darkness. Double Orc Pit technology. That's gonna make the early game a bit stronger from Mordor, but keep please in mind that he needs to heavily and desperately to defend this Lambri Mill over there at all costs, because that's gonna be the only resource income from Mordor beside the Citadel de Baradur. If he loses that, he will be broke and poor for a very long time. And Gondor is actually planning to creep with the Hobbit and the Soldier Battalion. Pippin is doing his job, and also the Gondor player was rushing to the settlement to kind of steal it from his opponent. There comes the Eye of Sauron, Gondor is not gonna use the land over there, so he knows he can't win the fight it's gonna be a 1v2 situation with the eye, they will also deal more damage. And remember, they will kind of ditch out more and more orcs every few seconds. The creep is gonna be taken by Gondor, but the money is gonna be taken by Mordor, and that's gonna be huge for Mordor. You cannot imagine how impactful the treasure is he just got from his opponent. It's gonna fill him the beast way, way quicker. He's gonna build a slaughterhouse and also a Haradrim palace simultaneously. Radrims are going to be quite helpful when it comes to creep the work layer and capture the outpost and hold them. So Mordor is definitely in a good spot. And also this farm from the wizard is going to be taken down. And we have orcs legit everywhere. Everywhere. And they won't stop coming. Every 28 seconds we will see two horde of orcs. The stable just built up and that's what he desperately needs. He needs his stable as soon as possible. Because Mordor is taking over the game. He's gonna also creep this goblin layer on the roof. It's as well as the ward layer at the bottom side. So Mordor is taking everything. He's gonna get a lot of power points from the creeps. That's gonna help him to uh, get to the industry power spike a bit faster. And way, way earlier. This creep is going to be taken by the Mordor Orcs. He will hit level 2. Um, if he has eye, he doesn't have eye. He could have been using it. Was Gondor evil to save the level 2 soldier though? The answer to this question is yes. He has even saved the level 1 soldier. That's pretty good. Because if you don't know, the soldiers are actually quite strong when it comes to destroy the outpost citadels. So because from the move we have seen from Mordor with the Haradrim Palace, we can already tell what his plan is. He's gonna plan to capture one of these outposts. And if you give your soldiers heavy armor in Forge Blades, they can destroy the Zeta from the outpost, which is the core, you know, the, the most important structure. Way quicker than Knights of Condor. 2 level 2. Mordor was able to creep this entirely, get also the money. Radrims are now moving to the you know, remaining work layer around the outpost, which is an offensive outpost because it's super close to the castle of Condor who is now just building up his second knight, as the first one is rushing to this area. Gondor has decent map control, but that's pretty much expected from this matchup. Once you see Knights of Gondor, you have to take care of the map control. Iosaram will be used, but Gondor soldiers will get away to the castle. Now you can save them, and later on you can also form them into combos with your Gondor archers. It's a possibility, because I don't think they can achieve too much once there are Haradrims on top of the field. Oh, the Knights! There comes the heal. And that's gonna be the first outpost from Mordor. Haradrims on top of the outpost, as you can see. When they are on, on top of the outpost, they actually turn into the Haradrim archers. That will increase their range. And they will act like an archer unit, not like a spear throw unit anymore. And he's gonna also capture the second outpost, pretty much the same situation for the red Mordor player. Level 3 soldier, level 2 soldier. They will also be fantastic when it comes to fight against the rune soldiers. So you want to keep them alive because the Haradrim Palace will hit level 2 after one more Haradrim will be recruited. We have now Boromi up on the field. Boromi is also great when it comes to fight against Haradrims or runes because it's their core weakness. They are very bad against heroes and Boromi is going to be also faster than them. So it gives you the catch, chase and kill potential. But until then, we have, you know, pretty much orcs everywhere. He will, he's gonna go for another orc pit around this outpost. 
and another orc pit around this outpost so he's playing now with four outposts in total um, oh i think that's a mistake over there before orc pits but i think he wanted to press c for the troll cage but press t for the orc pit because he's not even making orcs i think that's a huge misclick <laughs> from the murder player oh the hobbit has been taken down but the thing with the orc spam is though you kill them and oh he demolished it you see i knew it he's gonna go for the troll cage yes indeed it was a misclick that will cost him some time but it's not a big deal because he has the control of this map that's the most important thing and with the haradrim palace and the double orc pit you don't need to sit in your base in jail and you know chill you can basically actively fight for the map control that's what makes mordor so deadly against factions like gondor or rohan against aizen you already are in a winning situation because aizen has he's not gonna go for the vorks most of the time you know Boromir is about to hit level 4. That's going to be a very, very important power spike for the Captain of Gondor. And I think he's planning to rush his Gandalf. He has 3000, he has enough power points to turn the Grey Pilga into the White Rider. And the Barracks, I mean the Stable got level 2, but he's not going to stop making more Knights. I think he lost some of them. Maybe he was, yeah, I think he lost actually a lot of them. He lost actually all of them. There's only one more Knight remaining. He lost two battalions, actually. It has to be annoying. Because, you, you you know, you don't get too much from killing those orcs. But Mordor loses nothing. Because it costs nothing, you know. All you need to invest is time. And every 28 seconds, even less from this level 2 orc pits, you will have to deal with four hordes of orcs. Boromir at level 4. Now he can commit to the outpost. Boromir will simply walk into Mordor. Haradrims are actually dealing good amount of damage to the Boromir. As you can see and tell. But not good enough. He's going to commit to the Citadel. Which is not t t uh, dealing too much damage. But it's not about the damage that Boromir is deal. Because you cannot retarget with the Haradrims on top. They will always attack. And they will not stop attacking the target until he, it's get, it gets away. Or until it's dead. So Boromir can face tank this. And, uh, yeah. Haradrims will go down. There is, a Boromir, uh, there is a troll, but as long as the Boromir is around, he cannot commit. Boromir has the chance to knock you down on the ground. And troll knows that. But luckily he's fast enough, you know. Speedy Gonzalez, running for his life. But I like the way the map is looking like. Mordor is definitely dominating the map control. Has, you know, around 80% of the map. Gondor indeed playing only with two farms. One of them is going to be taken down very soon from the rune soldiers. The, the soldiers of Gondor are trying to make it to the spot. But they need to be careful. Because there is a troll which will smack them. And talking about the trolls, here they come. And you cannot get away from them. But he's going to summon the Great Company. Great Company, a counter. There comes Eye of Sauron. Um, but here's still the power points for Gandalf. One of the trolls has been taken down. He needed to move. You need to separate your... Um, trolls are very strong when it comes to uh, fight in, in choke points, you know, because they have, like, crazy splash damage. And you summon always three battalions of the... That's an interesting land over there. You can't get away from Boromir, by the way. He will keep you knocked down. And he's gonna hit level 5. Not that it really matters because the Horn of Gondor, what you're going to stun really. Actually, maybe it matters. Because in those situations, what you can do is you horn them and then you blast them with Gandalf. You know, like the Wombo combo potential. Boromir is safe. He has also healed for the worst case scenario. Um, but Mordor is bringing the fight away from his own castle. And he should have a lot of money. Yes, he indeed has a lot of money. He even has Darkness. So it's a very awkward situation now for Gondor. Um, he's definitely not ready to fight against such a Mordor force.
and it's kind of waste, you know, to, you know, keep your uh, wizard, your most important unit, to just kill some orcs. But you have to do that. You heard the big boy. Do not come between the Nazgul and his prey. Mordor Airways, boys. The final destination. Oof, what a fine hit. How are you planning to deal with this guy, by the way? Look at this big boy. Look how he's looking at you. The Lord of the Rings in the Battle for Middle Earth in 3D. <laughs> it was your cameraman, Shanks. I mean, to be honest, for a game that is 20 years old, this is not looking bad, by the way. Definitely not looking bad. We have Faramir. He's here to show his quality. In Boromir. So we have all the heroes beside Pippin. Who got killed before. But never revived. Three power points after darkness. But that shows you the domination of Mordor. Once you have a good start. Um, now let's talk about the mistakes from Gondor. What was the problem or what was the main reason why the game went the way it went, you know? First of all, you need to fight actively for the outpost. You cannot really freely give them up to your opponent because you need to understand that it will be difficult to reclaim them. So you can use a hobbit, you can put your knights around this location. And when you see your opponent is playing with double orc pit, all you want to do is place one horse here and one horse here. And the other horse is going to creep everything. And the other two horses you just placed in those places are, the, are gonna not do anything else besides trampling the orcs over and over again. So you don't want to give him the chance to creep that much. But I think the problem was also he went for the for the um, the stable a little bit too late. You know that might be also one of the reasons. Um, also, you know, he sent one of the soldiers forward to this location. Yes, he was able to claim the settlement for himself, but you can't really do much more with only one horse. So instead of going for this creep here, it would be better to move to this creep. And there are two major reasons for that, and I will explain why. Here, you will get nothing from the creep, right? You cannot go for the outpost because there is another war player protecting the outpost. But here you can get a reward immediately by getting this settlement which will give you extra money but also the food bonus making your uh, knights a bit cheaper and also most importantly you are very close to the settlement so you can get your hobbit level 2 your soldier level 2 and then you move to the spot and then you can camp here your second soldier can buy you time Ooh, hold on a second let's not talk about that one actually the witch king is here the mumakil is here and let the siege begin Will there, will, will there be a Rohan army, just like in the films, to save this Gondor? Minas Tirith, the White City is about to fall, and the base is going to be shredded very, very soon. We have uh, drummer trolls all over the place. We have tro uh, trolls with rocks in their hands, just in case the wizard is looking for some shenanigans. But I think this Mumma kill all alone with the Haradrim's arches on top of them are going to be super painful to be dealt with. Um, the lucky thing is though, you can shoot him, the Witch King is going to be the target, but Mumakil is looking, Mumakil is looking, everything is going in, oh my god, but he trampled his own trolls, the Mumakil is angry, level 5 Mumakil, who did he kill, he killed Boro and Farah with the one and only trample, they lose their damage leadership from Boromir, that's very, very bad, the Witch King, but the Mumakil is looking, oh my god, what a party in the base of Mordor, I mean, in the base of Gondor, uh, the ranger has no fire arrow, Gondor is kind of broke, but he has not the power points he needs to unlock the eagles, and he will unlock them, but he will not be using them. Ooh, son. The eagles are dealing hella damage, by the way. They deal damage to everything, including 
and the Witch King, Witch King is gonna target something, which will make him fly faster, and this way, he might get away, but the Eagle will not stop following him. This Eagle is gonna be busy dealing with this Mumma kill, but he's not targeting the Witch King though. If he would target the Witch King, he would fly way, way faster. Very smart move here from the Mordor player. I really like to see that a lot. And saving Witch King is crucial. Because even though you can revive him for free, it's gonna take you 4 minutes, which is a very long time. And dealing with this Mumma kills will reward Condor a bit more. But losing these two heroes, especially Boromir, and because Farah was only level 3, it's not really that impactful. But Boromir, that hurts actually, you know? And he also didn't go for the marketplace, so he has not a good time and not strong eco. Unlike Mordor, who has the time of his life, he can go for Mumma kills, he can go for Haradrims, Drummer Troll, Troll, and even potentially Nazgus later on. What I like to do at some point of the time, it's kind of debatable if it's better or not, but I personally think it's better. You, buy, you basically buy Fire Rose, put some Orc Arches with Fire on top of the Mumma kill instead of the Haradrim Warriors. And the, the difference is, like, there are a few differences, right? First of all, Haradrims have more range when they are on top of the Mumma kill than Arches. But they don't deal as much damage to heroes or also not to the, to the structures. Like the Orc Arches with Fire Rose. And also not to the Eagles. I mean, I, I'm, I'm happy that he didn't, didn't lose his gun after there. Uh, Boromir is back on the menu. Super important. You don't want to feed those uh, ranges levels, though. That's the last thing you want. Like, a level 10 ranger will, will solo your Witch King. Low-key, you know? B the, they have, like, crazy damage scholars. They are, like, pure glass cannons. But if you don't know, the ranges are the strongest archers in the game. Even though elves are outranging them. But in a, in a row fight, especially damage against damage, ranges outdamage anything. Especially when they fight around the, around Boromir with his leadership in a statue which provides you another 75% damage. He has no arches on top of this or inside the Zita. So Mordor should have been going for this outpost all along. This level 2 farms are giving Gondor just too much money and that's not needed. He has rocks on in their hands and also putting whole crown stands. So this way the trolls are not going to automatically shoot when enemy is nearby. So you can always target the target you want. You know what I'm saying? So Ganav is going to be the game changer. Ganav has to be the game changer. As Pippin said, you know, we have the White Wizard. It has to be good for something. But there are too many monsters. Even maybe a little bit too many for Ganav. You know? Look at this moment, guys. Oof, boy. It's scary. Um, you can also put Drummer Troll next to the Mumma kills, even though Mummas themselves don't benefit any, anything from the Drummer Troll, but the Drummer Troll affects the Haradrims on top of the Mumma kill, you know? So making it so they deal more damage. 5 power points, Mordor has actually 13, so 7 power points away from... Oof, the Trolls. They looking, boys. Oh my god. <laughs> if he didn't move there, you know, too many rocks. But the rangers, you see they are dying actually to the Haradrims. So nice. Ooh. Witch King. Attack the Witch King. Oh my god. I think Mordor was paying attention. The trolls are going ham. Boro has to be closer. It's a very tiny choke point. Trolls will laugh that. Ooh. The, 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 the Witch King. Oh, smart. Can he finish him off? Yes, that's a very important leadership. He will be just losing for no reason. But now the trolls will revenge their king of Engmar. Minas Morgul is his home. The Muma will open the base. Now it's the question is, is it going to be good for Mordor or bad? The Muma is looking. Oh my god. Where is the Boromir? He was nearby. The Muma is going to go down. But there are too many monsters and too little rangers. Too many monsters and too little rangers. Oh my god. Boro is having the fancy footwork around the Muma. Can even Drummer Troll is bringing the party to your home. It's like a weekend. 
He's paying attention to his Gandalf, obviously. Smart move here to target, but the Eagles will be special summoned. However, Mordor is about to unlock his Balrog. Two more power points needed. Gondor still needs three power points, but I think he will get a lot of power points after dealing with those trolls and also with these Moomer kills. Eight power points collected. Oof, what a fine hit. What a fine hit. 8 power points. Mordor has 18. They are pretty similar. This output should have been taken down, but never mind. He has now ranges inside of that. He luckily was able to save his bottom here this time. Trolls are going to be sent in randomly. But remember, he lost the archer range. So it will not be good for him. And the troll also not taking too much damage when there is a drummer troll nearby. And the darkness is still active, by the way. Too many monsters. Too many monsters. Nice catch. Nice catch. But there is one more troll. Uh, oh my god. Imagine the troll turning and hitting there. Oh, poof, he didn't hit. He didn't hit. That's gonna be so close with the power points. But even though... Look, even if you get EOD here, you can't... It's not gonna win you the game. You have no army. He's gonna be able to finish this Nazgul off with the Ganav, who didn't die once. But, you know... It sounds not right, but even the War of Power is not going to add too much to the table in this matchup. Because it doesn't one-shot trolls. It doesn't one-shot Moomer kills. It doesn't even knock down Moomer kills. Moomer kills can't be knocked down. They are just too thick to be knocked down. Unless they die, then they just fall. But you can't knock them back. Like you can all the other units. You can even knock back trolls. Or at least knock them down continuously. I mean, uh, you know, the mi oof, son, I'm a demon of the ancient world. It's the Balrog. He's gonna summon EOD. Can Balrog die, though? I mean, he's dealing a lot of damage. I mean, they are dealing a lot of damage. Ooh, bubble, kafu. I mean, yes, he died, but he was whipping, just like in the films. He was, it was just like in the films. Balrog died before he went down. He took Gandalf with him, you know? And more Moombas are coming. 64 out of 250 available command points for Gondor. And how you want to deal with this Moombas? Yes, there are even some rune soldiers. The men of the east against the men of the west. That's what this is all about he's gonna summon rohirrim just like in the films rohirrim are gonna fight try to fight against this uh Mumo kills one more ranger oof what a trample which king back on the menu uh, no i don't know man and the wizard knows there can be victory and he's gonna leave the game that's gonna be gg hopefully you guys enjoyed it if you did leave a like subscribe i will see you next time until then take care of yourself keep hitting like a truck and as always stay beyond standards peace out boys